this video, I want to address a common request I get from the people who see video training out on the internet and even people who see my video training and that is a basic fundamental non-understanding of what a relationship is in FileMaker or in a relational database. Now we cover relationships quite a bit but this video is going to be ultra basic. In fact it's not really specific to FileMaker it's just specific to relational databases and what it means and how they work. And so if you've been stuck or confused about relationships about FileMaker and you've been frustrated, well, those of you who have emailed me and said, help May Day, uh, we are here to help you today to resolve this. So this is going to be as basic as it gets. So to begin our understanding of what a relationship is, we're going to need a very basic brand new file. I'm going to say a new solution. It's going to be totally new. And the reason I'm not using FM starting point is that FM starting point has a lot of moving pieces and it's useful for a lot of people. But if you're just trying to learn just the basics about relationships, it's a little overwhelming. So let's just start with a blank file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I am going to create a table, multiple tables. What is a table? A table is a collection of like information. Like information, for example, would be people, right? Contacts. Frequently in databases, you see them called contacts and starting point is contacts. They're people, okay? So let's just call this table of like information contacts. So this is where all the people will live, okay? So we have a contacts table right here. I also want to create an invoice table. And the reason I'm going to use invoice is because a lot of people understand the relationship between a person and a person who buys something. It's kind of a fundamental. Even if you don't run a business and sell anything, odds are you probably go places and buy things. And so it, this is hopefully a very common analogy for you. And so we're going to create an invoice. An invoice is, is a transaction. It's a deal. A person did a deal to buy something. They might have purchased a hundred somethings or two somethings or one something. It doesn't matter what they bought, but they bought something. So we have contacts and invoices. So we can understand that there may be a relationship here already, but we haven't built it yet. All we've defined is a table. What are fields? Fields are the elements within the table. So I'm going to specify contacts right here. What would be the name? We would have a name. Right, we would have an address, right? We might have an email, and we might have a phone. Now, once again, I'm not going to get crazy with defining number fields and calculations. That's really a totally different conversation. This is just about the relationship right now. So, these are common elements that each contact probably has. So, I'm going to say that again a field is an element or an attribute that this table this contact has. If we go to invoices, what are the common elements of an invoice? Well, we'd have a date probably. In this case, I am going to define it as a date field. We're going to have a description of an item. So for the time being, we're going to keep this very basic. We're going to say that the person can buy one item. Okay. So we have a description that will be a text field. Then there's going to be the amount they paid. So I'm just going to say amount. And for the moment, I'm going to leave it as a text field. You could define it as a number field. I'm just going to leave it simple right now. So this is the beginning of our structures. We have a contacts. We have invoices. Now we have to find a way of connecting. That's what a relationship is, a connection between our two tables. So you're really not connecting two fields in a relationship. I mean, fields are part of it. At the end of the day, though, you're trying to establish a bridge between two sides of the river. That's our analogy today. We're using a bridge to connect the contacts on one side of the bridge to the invoices that are on the other side of the bridge and just pretend there's a river down the middle, right? It's water and you don't want to get wet so you need a bridge to go from one side to the other side. You have to connect the two sides. A relationship is a connection between the two sides. So I would ask you what would be the connection between these two sides? Like, would, there has to be a common piece. Well, for the time being, I don't see any common pieces here. So what we could do is we could go to the invoice side and put name in. So if we had the name on the invoice side 
and we had the name on the contact side, we could use those two pieces to connect the bridge together. Pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is that we have tables here, fields here, and this is the relationships. Now so far, there are no relationships. A relationship is going to be these lines that are going to cross connect, things like this, right? So I just grabbed uh, email there, doesn't matter. So what are we going to connect? For the time being, in our very su simple example, we're going to say that the name on the contact should match the name on the invoice, right? So if you had a, a name of a person on a piece of paper and you're a business owner, right? Say you're at a some sort of pet store and my daughter who loves animals comes in, her name's Sarah, and she's going to say, hi, I'm Sarah and I want to buy a lizard. She has lizards amongst everything else. So we want to establish that if Sarah comes in and we do paperwork for Sarah, Sarah's name will be on the invoice. So that should be the relationship. So I can grab and drag and connect. And so really, I know that we're using this bridge analogy, but this is the left side of the river, the right side of the river, and a bridge in between. So if I actually double click this box, I have to hit the arrow tool here, the handle. I can double click, it brings up this dialog right here, which basically says, if the name on the contact side matches the name on the invoice side, then the relationship, the bridge will connect. So that's what a relationship is. It's a bridge, but it's not really a concrete bridge. It only activates if the names match. Does that make sense? So people say, well, the bridge analogy means it's always there. It's made out of bricks. In the world of databases, the bridge is comes on and it turns off. And it turns on and it turns off. It's important to understand that it comes on if the two sides match. Now, in the business, we call that a matching key pair. It's a key, it's a value on the left side, a value on the right side, and it's a key if they match, then the bridge activates, right? So that's the idea. So this text, this screen right here, represents this box and this line right here. So I'm gonna hit OK. Now, when we built the database here, we put the tables, the fields in, FileMaker automatically created two layouts for us. Once again, it's ultra basic. So I'm going to come over here to the name. I have one record in here, and I'm gonna put Sarah. There's my daughter, big trouble. She's always getting too many pets. I think she actually lives at the pet store sometimes. So her name is Sarah at something, and she has, actually I don't even know her phone number because it's on speed dial on my phone. So I'm such a bad father. Anyway, so we know that there is a connection between these two sides. Now to better help visualize this, I'm gonna bring this window over here like this. I'm gonna pop a new window in FileMaker. Now, when I pop a new window, it duplicates the existing one, so that's what we have, but I wanna switch it to invoices. So I have an invoice over here. Now, if I put, up, oh, I don't have a record, I need to add a record, so I can click here and say new records. We have one record up here, and I'm going to say, it's a uh, lizard, lizard, singular, and the lizard is $5, okay? Or five euros or five pounds if you're in the UK, that's cool. Now, there's no relationship yet, but we know that we connected it by name. So if I put the word Sarah over here, theoretically, the relationship connects. Now, I can tell you under the hood, the relationship, the bridge has activated it and it's running. However, nothing happens because we don't have anything that uses the bridge yet. So we built the bridge, the bridge goes from left to right side, it's there, it's functioning, but we're not using the bridge. We have to actually walk across it. Now, to keep things uh, going, I'm actually gonna create another record over here, I'm gonna call it Tom, and I'm gonna create another new record called Sally. And over here, I'm gonna create a, another invoice, a new record. I'm gonna say that uh, Fred bought something. So understand that a Sally over here, because that relationship that we had, which was right here, name to name, Sally will lock on to Sally, Fred will lock on to Fred, they have to match. It's kind of an absolute. So what I have over here is I'm gonna say Fred bought a cat maybe it was a rescue cat and the cat was zero because it's a rescue cat and Fred's a good person for getting a rescue cat or rescue dog, we do appreciate that. And so the question is, we still have a bridge that may be activated but we, we can't see it. So how do we see it? Well, it's important to understand that 
when you have a bridge, if you're a person and you're walking across a bridge or driving across a bridge, there's two things that you can do with the bridge. You can stop on one side and look across and see the information, uh, the stuff. So if you look across, unless it's a, like a really long bridge, you can actually look across and see the people on the other side of the bridge. So in theory, Sally could look across the bridge and see this information. The other thing that you could do is drive across the bridge, grab the person, put them in your car, and drive them back across, or you could go over there and walk them across. But you could basically move the data or copy the data. So you can see the data, like looking across and seeing it, or you can actually go and copy and bring it back. So once the bridge is activated, you have two choices for what you can do with it. So I'm going to go to layout mode over here in FileMaker. I'm going to go to view layout mode. And so what I want to do is I want to show that we can see the information across the bridge. Now I can bring a field. I'm going to make this window a little bigger briefly here. I can drag a field down on screen here. This is a field I'm dragging down. It says, well, my current table is context. What field would I want? I don't want a field on context. I want to see through the bridge to the other side. So I select related tables. Okay. If I had other related tables in here, you'd see a longer list. Right now we have one relationship. So I say invoice. Then through the bridge to the other side, what on the other side would you like to see? Right? Well, uh, I don't know. Description would be great. How about that? We make a bigger description. I drag it down here and I see the amount and uh, maybe even the date if I'm so inclined. Now, once again, this is a very ugly database. I don't get any uh, points for prettiness. But this isn't about pretty. This is about you understanding. So I'm going to go make it smaller. I'm going to say browse mode. Now, I'm on Sally right here. I don't see anything because Sally doesn't match Sarah. If I flip down, I see Tom. That doesn't match anything here. If I flip down to Sarah, I see Lizard and $5. So I can see the data across. Understand that if I go to layout mode, I'm going to jump. I'm going to use Command or Control L. I'm going to jump to layout mode. These two little dots mean that I am looking like the binoculars. I'm looking across the relationship. The data doesn't really live in contacts. It's on the contact screen, but we are kind of borrowing it visually across the bridge. Make sense? So if I actually go into the database and said, oh, this lizard is in here in the contacts database, it's not. The lizard and five and this date, if I want to put the date in here, five, five, um, say 2016 or 2017 or 2018, whatever the year is. Notice I typed it in here. It put it over here automatically for me. So I can see the data across the bridge. I can also interact with it. I can change it. I can add it. So say so this is Sarah. And then there's Tom and there's Sally and I want to create a new record again. I've created the new record. I'm going to say that Margaret, my other daughter, goes to the pet store and she wants a corgi puppy. Now the problem is over here that I cannot click in here and add the information. So our bridge is a bridge to nowhere, right? That's always been a fun political term. It's a bridge that goes nowhere. We need a Margaret record over here. However, in FileMaker, if we go to File, Manage, Database, this brings up this window where we have tables, fields, and relationships, right? We can actually double click on this box right here and say, on the invoice side, allow the creation of related records in this table via relationship. So what this allows us to do, I click that, I hit OK, then I'm over here with Margs, I can actually see across the bridge. There's nothing on the so other side of the bridge, but I can actually type over here as I'm, I'm still standing on the contact side, but I can shoot the information across and force it to create a record on the other side. So Marg wants a Corgi puppy, okay? I don't even know if I spelled Corgi right. I can right click it and there it is. Corgi is with an I. So we have a Corgi puppy. If I come over here, I see that Margs has the Corgi record. So by typing in here, I'm able to force the creation of the record on the other side. I can also put that Margaret, you know, wasn't really a rescue dog because, you know, I don't see Corgis in the park abandoned randomly like cats are or other dogs. So Margaret paid $99 for a Corgi puppy. So there is 
the creation of the related record. Now, once again, the data lives here, but we're looking at it from the contact side through the relationship. Now, the next issue that we get into is the fact that Margs bought one puppy, right? And so what happens if Margs wants to come over here? I say, create a new record, or maybe we go back to Sarah. Sarah Sarah's my uh, animal person. I flip back to Sarah. I say, Sarah, I'm gonna put uh, today's date in here real quick. And I'm gonna put the description. She got a rescue. So Sarah gets a rescue giraffe. Now I can tell you that I would not be a fan of that because it would eat a lot and take up a lot of room in my house. But a baby rescue giraffe would be only probably five or six feet tall and it is gonna cost a billion dollars, but it's a rescue so it's probably free too because you know, rescue animals need homes. And then we put Sarah over here. Now the problem is Sarah already had a purchase which was the lizard so we don't see the rescue giraffe. So how do we solve this? Well, we need what we call a portal. So I'm going to go back over here on the left side and a portal allows you to look across the bridge and see all the related records. So I'm going to go to view, layout mode, and I'm going to grab, I'm going to make the window a little bigger. I'm going to grab the portal button right here and I'm going to drag it down like this. And it's going to say, well, a portal is designed to see related records through a relationship. There's only one relationship. It's the invoice relationship. There's options here. We're going to ignore those for now. I'm going to hit OK. What fields would you like? Well, the date, the description, and the amount. I already know the person's name. OK. We hit OK. So I go back to browse mode. And we can see that we can see multiple related records. We can see the lizard, the rescue giraffe which would be massive. And so if we added another item over here, or I could click over here and even type it, we could say that Sarah gets a uh, goldfish, which actually she has that too. She does not have a rescue giraffe yet. Uh, don't tell her I said that, because she'll, she's really smart, she'll hold it over my head. So $15 for a goldfish, that's probably an expensive goldfish. And we could give it a date, uh, I'm just going to say 4418 or 18, which would be in the future sometime. And uh, if we notice that we have now five records over here and we have the goldfish. So a portal allows us to see across the bridge multiple related records. If we don't use the portal, we only see the first related record. So these three fields right here are the identical same three fields right here. The difference is, is that because these are not in a portal, they can only see the first related record. In a portal, they can see all the related records. In fact, literally unlimited numbers. It could be millions of goldfish or whatever they are. You can put a scroll bar over here. It can go on forever. So that's kind of the basics of relationships. Now, we talked about the fact that you could look across the relationship or you could actually copy and paste data across relationship. Copying, pasting data would be one of two ways, either with a lookup function in your field, or you would do it through a script step. Both of those we do discuss in great detail in our FileMaker Pro video training course. So if you have learned something about FileMaker today that was very helpful, and you don't already have our FileMaker Pro video training course, I definitely recommend you check it out. Uh, most of the course, we don't do quite this basic things run a little bit faster but this is a super sticky topic that people get stuck on all the time and so we cover this but I covered it maybe slightly fast for a lot of you this is going to be too slow but there are people who have never seen or understood or seen this relationship connection like this and explained in this way hopefully this has helped you out if it's helped you send me a note to support at RC Consulting we appreciate hearing from everyone.